Once upon a time, on a sunny Sunday morning, June 21st, 1981, a group of 23 aspiring mountaineers gathered at the Paradise Inn, a rustic lodge nestled in the heart of Mount Rainier National Park. Excitement buzzed through the air as they prepared to embark on a challenging expedition to conquer the towering peak of Mount Rainier, standing proudly at 14,411 feet. Among the group were 10 novice climbers eager to test their limits, their dreams intertwined with the thrill of the unknown. Leading the way were six seasoned guides from Rainier Mountaineering Inc., their faces etched with experience and a profound respect for the mountain they called home. These guides, chosen for their expertise and unwavering commitment to safety, would play a crucial role in navigating the treacherous terrain and ensuring the climbers' well-being. The climbers, equipped with an array of specialized gear and a sense of camaraderie forged through their shared passion for mountaineering, set off in the early hours of the morning. The first rays of dawn painted the sky with hues of pink and gold, casting an ethereal glow over the landscape. The beauty of the surrounding wilderness was awe-inspiring, but little did they know of the challenges and heartache that awaited them. As the group made their way towards their goal, they encountered the formidable Cowlitz Glacier, a mass of frozen ice that presented its own set of obstacles. Step by step, they carefully navigated the icy surface, their crampons digging into the snow for stability. The guides, adept at traversing the glacier's treacherous crevasses, led the climbers with skill and unwavering focus. With the glacier conquered, the climbers faced the next hurdle in their journey, Cathedral Rocks Gap. This narrow passage, sandwiched between towering cliffs, demanded precise footwork and unwavering concentration. The climbers, their hearts pounding with a mix of fear and exhilaration, carefully maneuvered through the gap, guided by the expertise and reassuring presence of their experienced leaders. As they emerged on the other side, a sense of accomplishment washed over them. They had conquered yet another challenge, drawing closer to their ultimate goal. However, the mountain had its own plans. The previous night's snowfall, two feet of fresh and unpredictable snow, had transformed the terrain into a deceptive playground of shifting masses. Senior guide John Day, recognizing the increased risks presented by the fresh snowfall, made the difficult decision to reassess the situation. With a heavy heart and the safety of the climbers in mind, he determined that it was no longer safe to continue the ascent. The group had reached an elevation of 11,200 feet, at the base of Disappointment Cleaver, and it was here that Day announced their change of course. Three climbers, their bodies weary from the demanding climb, recognized their limits and decided to heed the advice of the guides. Disappointed but understanding, they made the difficult choice to turn back, retracing their steps towards Camp Muir. Guide Christopher Lynch, his compassion shining through, led them down the mountain, providing reassurance and support. Meanwhile, guides John R. Day, Michael Target, and Peter Whitaker embarked on a scouting mission to assess the snow conditions and potential avalanche risks on Emmons Glacier. Their experienced eyes scanned the terrain, searching for any signs of danger that could pose a threat to the climber's safety. As the climbers on Ingraham Flats caught their breath and prepared for the next leg of the journey, they had no idea that the mountain was about to unleash its fury. Without warning, a fracture occurred in the Ingraham Glacier icefall, a colossal frozen structure that had stood for centuries. The fracture triggered a cataclysmic event, causing a massive wall of ice, 300 feet wide, to break loose and hurtle down the mountainside. From their vantage point higher up on Disappointment, Cleaver, Guides Day, Target and Whitaker watched in horror as the wall of ice shattered upon impact, unleashing a torrent of snow and debris. The deafening roar echoed through the valley, a chilling reminder of the power that resided within the mountain's icy heart. The avalanche, an unstoppable force of nature, barreled down Ingram Flats with terrifying speed, heading directly towards the unsuspecting climbers. Panic and chaos ensued as the climbers, roped together in groups of five, desperately tried to escape the wrath of the avalanche. Adrenaline surged through their veins as they fought against the sheer force of nature, their every instinct urging them to survive. But against the relentless onslaught of tons of ice and snow, their efforts were futile. The climbers were engulfed by the raging tempest, swallowed by a white void of chaos and destruction. Their bodies tumbled helplessly down the mountainside, their screams drowned by the overwhelming roar of the avalanche. The tranquility of the mountainside transformed into a scene of unimaginable tragedy and despair. Several agonizing minutes later, as the avalanche began to subside, eleven figures emerged from the rubble, 
Disoriented, battered, and filled with a mix of relief and grief, they surveyed the devastation around them. Their survival was nothing short of miraculous, a testament to their strength and resilience in the face of unimaginable adversity. But as the survivors took in their surroundings, a grim realization settled upon them. The climbers they had shared laughter, stories, and dreams with were nowhere to be seen. Among the missing was guide Tom O'Brien, a beacon of expertise and leadership. The weight of their loss, combined with the survivors' guilt, threatened to crush their spirits. The remaining guides, their hearts heavy with sorrow and determination, wasted no time in launching a search and rescue operation. They combed through the debris left in the wake of the avalanche, hoping against hope to find signs of life. Theirs was a mission fueled by love, a relentless pursuit to bring closure to the grieving families who clung to threads of hope. Days turned into nights as the search efforts intensified. Rainier Mountaineering Inc. guides, National Park Service rangers, and volunteers from the Seattle and Tacoma chapters of the Mountain Rescue Association joined forces, united by a shared purpose. The mountain, usually an unforgiving adversary, witnessed an outpouring of compassion and solidarity as these courageous men and women risked their own safety to recover the fallen climbers. Finally, after days of relentless efforts, a break in the weather provided a glimmer of hope. The rescue team, driven by a mix of exhaustion and unwavering determination, reached the site of the avalanche. Armed with shovels and an unwavering commitment, they meticulously dug through the snow and ice, their hands raw from the cold, and their hearts filled with a mixture of anticipation and trepidation. Minutes turned into hours as they methodically searched every inch of the debris field. The weight of responsibility pressed upon them, their every movement guided by the memory of those they had lost. Yet, despite their tireless efforts, their hands met with emptiness. The climbers had been swallowed by the mountain, their final resting place concealed deep within a crevasse beyond the reach of human recovery. With heavy hearts and tears in their eyes, the rescue team made the painful decision to call off the search. It was a devastating blow to the families and friends of the fallen climbers. Their hopes of a reunion dashed against the harsh reality of the mountain's indomitable power. The grief that enveloped them was immeasurable, an anguish that would forever be etched into their souls. In the wake of the tragedy, Mount Rainier National Park Superintendent William Briggle recognized the need for answers and accountability. On Tuesday, July 7, 1981, a board of inquiry was convened to investigate the circumstances surrounding the accident. Eyewitnesses, glacial experts, and seasoned mountaineers came forward to share their testimonies, shedding light on the sequence of events that led to the devastating avalanche. Weeks turned into months as the board meticulously examined the evidence and deliberated on its findings. Finally, on Wednesday, August 20th, 1981, their report was released. It exonerated the guides from any responsibility for the accident, recognizing their experience, professionalism, and adherence to accepted mountaineering practices. The guides had led the climbing party up the safest and most heavily traveled route, had paused to rest in a protected area on Ingram Flats, and had taken immediate action to ensure the safety of the surviving climbers. A year later, on Tuesday, June 22, 1982, the families and friends of the fallen climbers gathered at the Paradise Visitors Center Auditorium for a private memorial service. It was a solemn occasion, filled with tears and bittersweet memories. With heavy hearts, they paid tribute to their loved ones, sharing stories of their adventures, their laughter, and their indomitable spirit. A permanent memorial was established in the foyer, serving as a tangible reminder of their enduring presence in the hearts of those who loved them. Today, the tragedy of the Mount Rainier avalanche in 1981 remains etched in the memories of the mountaineering community and the nation. It stands as a stark reminder of the inherent risks and unpredictability that accompany the pursuit of mountaineering. The climbers, David Bolton, Mark Ernland, Ronald A. Farrell, Gordon Hennage, David Kidd, Jonathan Layton, Ira Liebman, Henry Matthews, Thomas M. O'Brien, Craig Tippy, and Michael Watts shall forever be remembered for their bravery, their passion for the mountains, and their untimely demise on the slopes of Mount Rainier. Their spirits remain intertwined with the very fabric of the mountain, a poignant reminder of the delicate dance between human ambition and nature's awe-inspiring power. As the years pass, the mountaineering community and visitors to Mount Rainier National Park pause to pay tribute to the fallen climbers. Their names etched in memorial plaques and their stories whispered in the winds that dance across the mountain slopes. They serve as a constant reminder of the fragility of life and the unwavering spirit of those who dare to reach for the summit. 
And so in the end, the story of the Mount Rainier avalanche of 1981 stands as a poignant reminder that the mountains are not merely conquerable obstacles, but also guardians of the human spirit. The climbers who lost their lives on that day may be entombed within the icy embrace of the mountain, but their spirits live on, forever intertwined with the very essence of Mount Rainier, reminding us to approach the heights with humility, respect, and an unwavering appreciation for the beauty and power of the natural world.